still staying a little bit with the minority, I, may, I must say. Well, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata will proceed to court seeking to set aside findings by Schwarz following its investigation into the 2.25 billion issue uh, relating to the minister's asset declaration. Information Minister Mustafa Hamid says the matter of asset declaration was not before Schwarz per the original complaint filed by the NDC's Broja Jemfi. The government believes the human rights body was not placed to make any such pronouncement regarding asset declaration. Now, the information ministry, minister has been responding to a press uh, at a press conference, or to a press conference, I must say, by the minority in parliament that's seeking to get Ken Oforiata either resign or be sacked by President de Kufuado. We have taken note of a press conference by the minority side in parliament on the rather overflogged issue of the bond issued by the government last year. Even though the issues raised by the minority are rehashed and discredited, we recognize that they are determined to keep these matters burning for as long as it takes, with the hope that they may just be able to scoop whatever political advantage that they can get from it. The NDC continues to hold in high esteem the Gobelian principle that repeating a lie often can establish it in the minds of people as true. Well, we also believe that no matter how long a log stays in water, it does not become a crocodile. Even so, we wish to reiterate the following points in response. It is important to state that the NDC activist, with the active support of the NDC machinery, went to the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice charge to allege specifically that Mr. Ken Oforiata, the Minister for Finance, by the issuance of the bond, had involved himself in a conflict of interest situation and had thereby benefited himself and his friends in the process. Shraj established that their claim was baseless and without merit. And I refer to page 136, paragraphs 20 and 21 of the Shraj report, which specifically states that Mr. Ken Ufuriata did not benefit from the issuance of the bond, nor did any of his businesses, nor did any of his friends and family and also business associates. As players in a democracy, we expected that the NDC would take the strike ruling in their strides and move on. But it seems that the minority is determined to keep this matter going, even if for nuisance purposes. In the process, they keep shifting the goalpost. We wish to remind the NDC that one, guidelines for the issuance of bonds are given by the Bank of Ghana and not the Ministry of Finance. And the guidelines with which the 2017 bonds were issued had been in existence since 2015, which guidelines determined the issuance of bonds in the period that the NDC was in office. Number two, Shrides determined that none of the companies in which Ken Oforiata has interests benefited or participated in the bond issuance. Three, we understand the psychological effect they hope to attain by constantly assailing Ken Oforiata. We can understand the discomfort that the NDC feels with the great work that has been done in reordering the messy economic fundamentals that the NDC bequeathed to us. Therefore adopted what in some football circles is termed, quote, if you miss the ball, don't miss the man, unquote. They have lost the argument on the proper management of the economy and therefore they must attack the architects of this great work. Unfortunately, these men, including Ken Oforiata, wear shin guards and will not succumb to such foul play. We consider it a blessing to the country that we have as finance minister somebody who has enormous experience in international finance and banking. While making the point, we wish to ask the question, since when the success in one's private life become a hindrance to the performance of his duties.
Officials of NADMO in the Upper West Region have shut all offices of the agency to protest attacks on them by thugs suspected to be loyalists of the governing NPP. It was a chaotic scene yesterday when some youth said to have come from the Wa East District raided the offices and beat up the personal assistant to the regional coordinator Isaac Seydu. Four people, we understand, were arrested in connection with the incident, but they were allegedly released following a directive by the regional minister. This develop development comes on the heels of President Bekufado's directive for security agencies to crack down on vigilantism across the country. We'll be getting some more in a subsequent bulletin, but the very latest that's just coming in from the presidency on that report is the is that President Ekufuadu has suspended the Upper West Regional Minister. And this is a, le a letter coming from the Flagstaff House that we're just receiving now on a green uh, paper, I must say. So let me read out the statement to you now. It says, uh, for immediate release, President Ekufuadu suspends Upper West Regional Minister. It says the President of the Republic, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuadu, has suspended with immediate effect from office the Minister for the Upper West Region, Alhaji Suleimana Al Hassan, pending the outcome of the investigation into the unfortunate incident that occurred at the premises of the Upper West Regional Office of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, in WA, on Wednesday, the 31st of January 2018. President Ekufado reiterates his commitment to the application of the laws of the land which must occur without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and without recourse to the political, religious or ethnic affiliations of any citizen of the land. The Deputy Upper West Regional Minister, Mr. Amidu Ishak, will act as Regional Minister in the interim pending the conclusion of the investigation. And it is um, signed by Eugene Ahin, Director of Communication at the Flagstaff House. We'll bring you more on this story as and when we have it. We'll bring you more of this story um, as and when we have now uh, research by engineers at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is indicating it's indicating that the maize, uh, maize contains cancer-causing metal substances. The findings is published in the Journal of Science and Technology. It suggests that Ghanaians consume between 25 to 97.2 milligrams of iron particles daily for meals prepared from milled maize. This is far, for, far above the National Research Council recommended dietary iron intake. Love FM's Chrissy Debra report. We'll bring you that story uh, in a bit.